All right, welcome back to my bench. Today I'm going to be working on my Fluke 123 industrial scope meter. It's a nice little meter. I've had it for about 20 years, but it's developed an issue. It won't turn on, and I suspect it's probably the old battery that's in it. And I have two of them, and they are Fluke. Uh, they're let's see if I can get this. They're 4.8 volt, 200 milliamp battery pack NICAD. And they are just sub, four sub-C 1.2 volt cells. So I tried to find this battery pack online and they've upgraded it to nickel metal hydride. And they're a bit expensive. They're like $110, $120. So that was not going to happen. I don't pay that much for full batteries. Sorry. Not for anyone. So my alternative was to uh, see if I could find one on Amazon or eBay or something. And of course there were some clones out there. And I saw that they had some pretty bad reviews, so I didn't uh, go for that. I figured, why not try and rebuild my own pack? So that's what we're going to do. I've done some reading on this, and you can upgrade these from uh, NICADs to nickel metal hydrides and maybe even lithium ion. But the problem is the battery charger in here and the firmware. I believe it's, uh, I'm not sure what firmware is on this because I can't turn it on. But I think uh, I'm just going to stick with the NICAD because they're cheap. Like you can get 10 of them on Amazon for, for about 10 to $15. So that is quite cheap compared to the 120 that Fluke wants for this battery pack. And plus I don't have to worry about the charging circuit for uh, replacing a direct replacing NICAD with NICAD. Yeah, they don't look too bad. There is a little bit, this side here has got some corrosion growing on it. And I've seen, you know, I, I know you can shock them and try to revive them. But then I mean, we're talking 20 year old batteries here. So I'm not, it's not worth it. I'm not going to, you know, try and get another 10 days out of it or a couple hours. I want something that's going to be fairly reliable if I want to use this uh, in, you know, mobile applications. So, like I said, I went on Amazon and bought, I believe, 10 or 12 of these NICAD 1.2 volt cells. And they are 2200 milliamp hours, 1.2 volt. So they're a little bit better. All right, so this wiring needs to come off this battery. Let's see if I can do this here. See if there's enough heat in this iron. Oh, that was easy. Very good. So it looks like these are tack welded to the cells. So obviously I'm gonna to have to cut these off with a pair of nips. All right, let's see here. Get an ohm meter on this. And I'm getting about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ohms. So this might even be a very small resistor, resi uh, small value. Like this might be just for load balancing the cells. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. So uh, since I'm staying with the same battery chemistry, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to put it in on the new cells and call it a day. It's there for a reason, so I'm going to keep it there. So we're going to assemble the new cells now, and hopefully we'll be able to get this thing powered up. Okay, so I got the batteries out. Now I'm going to measure the batteries just to make sure that uh, they indeed have something, some sort of a charge on them. So I'm going to put my meter on DC volts and just... 1.28, and 1.2. Okay, now I'm gonna try and measure this old cell, see if there's any life left in this. 
0.1 volts. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Dead. So these are all stone dead except for one cell. Uh, so yeah, this is going on recycling. All right, so now we gotta figure out how we wanna assemble this. All right, so I put a piece of tape on one one side of this because I don't want them to show it out since you have to put these in series. And if you do that and the other one touches this and this one touches that, you basically have uh, two batteries reverse polarity touching each other. And that's probably not a good idea. So this side's up plus this is right there as well. And this is the negative side. And I'm just going to have to figure out which way is the best way to do this and I think I'll just go with the tie them this way now I'm probably gonna glue this whole pack together first before I solder them just to make things a little bit easier all right so I've soldered one pack and this is the second pack and just put a little bit of flux in here make things go a little easier let's see if this will Take some solder. I have to hold it down with something other than my finger. That's good. So now that I have two of these soldered up, I can make one full pack, solder this, whatever it is, resistor in here between the two battery cells and glue the rest of the pack together and I just use regular hot glue for now just to kind of assemble things I might throw some super glue in there and peel this stuff up you can always get hot glue off with alcohol there's a tip for you so uh, I'm gonna do that now so now we have to deal with all this these connections peel that up a bit I want to be careful not to short these out. They're not like uh, lithium though. They won't explode instantly. <laughs> Lithium's some pretty evil stuff. Those batteries do not like being overheated, overcharged, underdrained. They're very, very, very delicate flowers. And ICAD's a little bit more forgiving. So we can basically cut all the tabs off of the side, which I probably should have done to make things a little easier for myself. Let's see, it's going to start there and here. leave these a little long for now because I'm not sure how I'm going to connect this other device. So I'm just going to hot glue these now together. Just tack them together so we can get everything assembled. So now I'm going to put some flux on here, get these tinned up.
tack this stuff together. solder on this and just tuck that in there like that and we're almost ready to hook the wires back up I'm going to cut these excess off. All right, now I'm going to be trying to put the wires back on there. So I'm going to need a solder on each end of this battery. A little bit of flux. The batteries will soak up a bit of heat too, and that can always be problematic. I'm not going to say it's completely safe soldering batteries, but it's usually pretty quick about it. They don't complain too much. All right, so this wants to be. All right, so. That's going to get stretched over there. It's put in like that. Give me a little bit of extra slack here to run the thermal sensor in the battery. I'll probably tack that down with some hot glue and hook up the red one here and we're almost there looking good so far so I'm going to glue and tape this stuff down kind of like the way they had it all right so I've uh, got those glued together I got the sensor glued to the battery pack it doesn't look super pretty I got it all taped down but it doesn't really matter because it's gonna be hidden under this case just as long as it's safe um, there was no tape originally on the bottom, so I'm not going to do that because I really can't show it against anything. So let's try and put this on here, and hopefully everything fits in there nicely. All right, so that wrapping didn't work out too well, so I found some white electrical tape and made up my own little casing. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, as long as it functions. I really don't care what it looks like. I always label your batteries to make sure in the future you know what they are. So let's pop it in and see what happens. Take out the old pack. Pop in the new one. Never like that battery connection in there. And see if we can tuck it in there. Nice and snug. Shouldn't go anywhere. Oh, and it just turned on. Excellent. Okay, so I have the scope meter powered up. I have done a refresh on this. You have to do a refresh on the battery when you first put in a new battery set, and I would advise that. And you can do that by going to user options and press battery refresh. It's 
going to take between 12 and 16 hours to do this. I believe it drains the battery and charges it up fully. And once it's done, it doesn't really tell you. You just have to go by the clock. So after 12 hours, I turned it back on. And I have turned it on, and so far it's been running about an hour, and it's only dropped down one battery bar on the battery graph here displayed on the meter. So that's not too bad. That's a lot better than what I was getting, which was nothing. So uh, if it's only dropped down one bar in an hour, I can, I can work with that. Um, so this is going to be ongoing testing with this. I think I'm going to have to, I'm just going to be keeping this on until it dies and find out uh, how long it takes. And once I figure that out, I will put the time that I found that it lasted in the description. I think it's roughly going to hopefully last the three or four hours, but we will see. So these... Like I said, these batteries that I found on Amazon, I will put the link in the description if you guys were looking to do this project. I think you can get five or six cells, six cells for around $11 if you have Amazon Prime. So that's not bad. Uh, I bought the two, uh, I think I bought 10 of them for $16, which is a little bit better deal if you're buying them in bulk. And that is because I have another battery pack I can rebuild. So if you have two battery packs, you buy the 10 pack if you have the one uh, buy the five pack and you'll get uh, an extra battery or two or is it a six pack I forget I'll put the link in the description I think it's a six pack so you get two extra batteries if you buy the six pack so that is it I will probably be doing some further testing on these cells to on uh, some other equipment to see if they really state that they are 2200 milliamp hour batteries and that will be kind of interesting so stay tuned for that so uh, that's about it. I'm going to uh, close out this video and that's about it. See you in the next one.